2019 NHL Entry Draft is closing in. That means it's time for Bob McKenzie's final installment of his draft rankings. We can do it all. Playmaker, goal scorer, be smart and tenacious. He wins battles, makes plays, a real good all-around player. It's a two-player race atop the list as Jack Hughes and Capo Capo have put on a show all season long. Hughes, back pass, scores! What a play! Jack Hughes! Oh, it's 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 to make a difference in the game, and he does. After that, all eyes will be on the third pick. Will it be a BC boy selected in Vancouver? Byron cuts to the slot, scores! There's tons of talent atop this list, with many of these teenagers looking to make an immediate impact at the next level. Plus, how many more Canadians will crack the top 10? It's Bob McKenzie's final draft ranking show for 2019, next. As we welcome you to Bob McKenzie's annual draft ranking show, just so happens to be the longest running Canadian hockey reality TV show. So kudos to you, Bob. Today, he will unveil his consensus ranking, which will become reality on June 21st in Vancouver when NHL teams select 31 players in the very first round. This is our annual reminder, I guess, that this is not a mock draft. This is not a situation where you line up the teams over here and line up the prospects over here and match up the names and the numbers. That's not how this works. What it is is surveying National Hockey League scouts, 10 National Hockey League scouts that we talked to, getting their own numerical rankings, putting them all together to try and get a consensus of where there's a reasonable expectation that player may fall in the draft in Vancouver on Friday night. Now, we should point out this is very much the year of the American. Six of the top 12 prospects on our list, our final list, are Americans. 10 of 31 are Americans, including eight players from the U.S. Under-18 program. And if those eight players from the U.S. Under-18 program were to go in the first round, it would be a record. All right, let's take a look at the draft order before we get started here. What we're showing here is the top 10 picks, plus all Canadian teams with picks in the very first round. New Jersey winning the draft lottery, so they get number one. Uh, some Canadian teams for you to look at here. Edmonton picking at number eight. Vancouver at 10, followed by Montreal, Ottawa, and Calgary with 15, 19, and pick number 26. So, Bob, is there any doubt who New Jersey is going to pick at number one? I'm 99.9% .9 certain the New Jersey Devils will take Jack Hughes first overall. But for the first time this year, he is not a unanimous choice on our list. Two of ten scouts went with Capo Caco. But, hey, with eight going with Hughes, he is the definitive number one on our list. It's the Jack Hughes draft, and 10 out of 10 scouts we surveyed said he's clearly the number one guy. Jack Hughes! Jack Hughes! Jack Hughes! Jack Hughes! Jack Hughes! Magic by Jack Hughes! People ask, how do you know when he's dangerous? I'll tell you when he's dangerous, the man he steps on the ice. Jack Hughes is head and shoulders above the rest of the competition right now. There is no better player in the draft than Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes is only 5 foot 10, a little bit over that, 171 pounds. But my goodness, is he a dynamic player. Elite goal scoring ability, elite playmaking ability, an unbelievable first step acceleration. And the most important aspect is that his mind processes the game as fast as his feet and his hands work, which is really something special. Should point out, that 8-2 is a little bit misleading, though. Eight scouts saying they would take Hughes at number one. So many of the scouts, because they don't have to make the choice, because they know they weren't picking number one and they don't have to make that decision between one and two, between Jack Hughes and Capo Caco, a lot of them spent about that much time on it. And a lot of them admitted that their scouts were pretty much split down the middle, but they erred on the side of the guy who's been at number one all year long. So it's even closer than the 8-2 would suggest, but Hughes is still the definitive choice. And to hear a little bit more on Jack Hughes, we're going to welcome in our senior director of scouting, Mr. Craig Button. Craig, Jack Hughes's coach described his style of play as controlled chaos. I mean, what does he mean by that? Well, Jack Hughes, to Bob's point, the speed, the mind, the hands, and everything that goes with it, you got to understand that he's under control, but what he does is he creates chaos for everybody else on the ice, mostly the opponents. His ability to uncheck himself and get open at the right times, and he uses deception, and he uses his speed and then his mind to understand where those openings are going to be, which makes him incredibly difficult to mark and to understand where he is going. So while he's under control, the rest of the opponents are wondering, what is Jack Hughes going to do? And that is what creates the massive confusion for them and 
the chaos. So this will mark a f unprecedented fourth straight year a non-Canadian has been selected first overall, starting with American Austin Matthews in 2016, followed by Swiss Nico Kiescher in 2017, and Swede Rasmus Dahlin in 2018. Canada's last number one pick, Connor McDavid in 2015. All right, Bob, on to number two, Capo Caco. I mean, there's got to be a lot to say about this guy. Well, no question about that. Capo Caco, a tremendous year in Finland, and no question, the number two on our list. Capo Caco is a physically mature 6'2", 194-pound winger who can play a little center if he needs to, but he's primarily projected as a winger. He started the season in the Finnish Elite League. He scored in his first game, and all he's done since then is score goals and dominate hockey against men. Uh, played extraordinarily well at the World Junior Championship for the Finns, and then really surprised a lot of people when he went to the Senior Men's World Championship in May and basically dominated the tournament offensively. He is a handful, especially from the hash marks down low, below the goal line. A tremendous player off the cycle, but he can make plays, he can score goals, and he's ready to make an immediate impact in the National Hockey League. And that's why a number of teams are intrigued by him and believe that he is as good, if not better, than Jack Hughes. We're going to welcome in Craig again. Craig, now Central Scouting had... Capo Caco ranked a perfect 10 out of 10 in competitive. But, I mean, you watch him at World Juniors. I got the chance to follow him and watch him game by game. He's got a lot more to his game than that. Absolutely he does. If you want to think he's just about a competitive player, he's got tons of skill and a real understanding of how to use that. I mean, you watch this goal. He's losing his balance, never loses his focus, and then he makes the move in tight on one leg. That is high-end skill. And then how about these magic hands? Magicians can't even have that sleight of hand. Capo Caco with the ability to play in tight, as Bob said, with a power game. Yes, he's got the high-end competitiveness. He's got high-end skill to go with it. Thanks, Greg. All right, Bob, we've got the first two. Can you fill out the top five for us? Yeah, let's get the Canadian flag waving here because as we look at number three, it's the highest-ranked Canadian in this draft. That would be number three, Bowen Byram. The Vancouver Giant blue liner is the clear choice as the best defenseman in the entire draft. He's a high-impact offensive force who can skate the puck up the ice and make things happen or provide pinpoint passing to get the puck up there. In either case, the highly competitive defenseman drives offense and he projects as a top-pairing NHL defenseman and may be ready to contribute in the NHL immediately. Number four, Alex Turcott. The son of former NHLer Alfie Turcott is a hard-driving, talented, two-way center whose stock shot up considerably late in the season after he overcame a variety of injuries and illness. The U.S. under-18 te uh, under team pivot has above-average skill, but also plays an abrasive, aggravating, and strong two-way game. Number five, Kirby Dock. The towering six-foot-four Saskatoon Blade Center has elite size, smarts, and skill. He's viewed as a better playmaker than a goal scorer, but he's got an excellent shot, and he's capable of doing both at a high level. As high as his ceiling may be, and scouts say it's right up there with anyone in the draft, especially once he fills out that frame, scouts say he's also very inconsistent and needs to develop more consistency with his work ethic. So you're going to see TSN index throughout the show. It represents each player's movement in the TSN rankings from mid-season to now. Alex Turcott made a big jump, moving seven places from number 11 to number 4. By the way, his dad, Alfie, as mentioned, was selected number 17 overall in 1983 by Montreal. Now, two WHLers are in top five, Byram and Kirby Dock. Last year, there are only two WHLers picked in the entire first round. All right, Bob, let's go six to ten. All right, let's go to the WHL again. Dylan Cousins, the Lethbridge Hurricane Center. Big, strong, fast. Plays a powerful straight line game. Can be physical, can make plays. No questioning his work ethic or his character. But the question the scouts have been asking is how high end is that skill level? Is it elite? He was just okay at the under 18 World Championship in April, but he would appear to have way too many qualities to not be a top 10 pick and a top two line NHL center. 
Number seven is Trevor Zegras, the U.S. center, who also saw time on the wing. He's amongst the smartest and most skilled prospects in this draft. Great hockey sense, great hands, great mind. He has yet to fill out, but few doubt he projects as a skilled top two line talent in the NHL who could play at center or on the wing. Number eight, Vasily Podkolzin. The hard-working but highly skilled Russian fell from number three to number eight, in part because he didn't produce well at the Under-18 World Championship in April. But he dominated the Ivan Holinka Under-18 last August, and he was stellar at the 2019 World Junior Tournament. He's likely staying in the KHL until 2021, which could factor into draft day decisions. Number nine is Cole Caulfield. He is, quite simply, the best goal scorer in the draft. And he's got a U.S. under-18 program record of 72 goals to prove it. He's small, of course, though he finally broke the 5'7 barrier when he was measured at the NHL Combine. Now, in spite of his size, he's viewed as having that special quality to project as an NHL goal-scoring star winger. Number 10, Peyton Krebs. The Kootenai Ice Center plays a complete game, and he play, excels all over the ice. He's quick, he's smart, skilled, and determined on offense but shows all the same traits when he doesn't have the puck. He recently underwent surgery to repair a torn Achilles tendon, but with a good prognosis and NHL team's medical staff having input on it, he's still expected to be a top 10 pick. All right, number six, Dylan Cousins is on track to be just the third UConn native to play in the NHL. Number eight, Vasily Podkolzin dropped five slots from midseason. There's only one defenseman among the top ten, Bowen Byram. If things were to roll out that way, it would be the only the fourth time in the 51-year history of the modern draft that nine of the first ten picks are forwards. And Bob mentioned that Peyton Krebs played for Kootenai. He's listed under Winnipeg because that is where the team will relocate next season. Still ahead, American Spencer Knight enters the draft as the highest rated goaltender since 2010. Byron cuts to the slot, scores! And top rated Canadian and BC native Bone Byram on what it will be like being drafted in his home province. Welcome back. A pair of Canadian teams, Montreal at number 15 and Ottawa at number 19, are feature attractions in the middle third of the first round. The Senators have Columbus's pick at number 19, courtesy of the Matt Duchesne trade. Here's a look at uh, number 11 to 15. Two more Americans lead off the next group. Number 12, Spencer Knight, is the highest rated goalie since Jack Campbell entered the 2010 draft as the number 9 rated prospect. And, Bob, we see Alex Newhook, Canadian, at number 13 there. He's a great story. Uh, it is a great story. He is the all-Canadian prospect. Born and bred Newfoundlander, came to southern Ontario, Toronto, actually, to go to St. Andrews College, played his minor midget hockey with the York Simcoe Express, same organization Connor McDavid started with. And then after he got drafted into the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, because he is from the Maritimes, he is from Newfoundland, he decided instead to go to Victoria, British Columbia and played a couple of years with the Grizzlies in the BCHL out there. Tremendous offensive talent, played center, played wing, and he really solidified his spot in the top 15 as a threat to crack into the top 10 with a strong offensive performance at the Under-18 World Championship where he played on the wing. But boy, oh boy, skilled, smart, competitive. He's got all the tools. All right, let's take a look at 16 to 20, Bob. We've got three more defensemen at number 16, 17, and 18. They fill out a run of five straight blue Blue Liners, including American-born Thomas Harley. His parents are both Canadian, so he's adopted their home country as his for international hockey. Another Team Canada player, Ryan Suzuki, well, he saw his draft stock fall from number 12, Bob, at midseason to number 20 at season's end. Ryan Suzuki's an interesting prospect. Uh, obviously, the younger brother of Nick Suzuki, the Montreal Canadian prospect, who was taken by Vegas in the first round of the draft a couple of years ago. Uh, Suzuki is extremely skilled, like his brother. Uh, he's really smart, elite hockey sense, elite skill. Uh, but the scouts really kind of were down on him a little bit this year because he needs to assert himself more, that he played too much of a perimeter game. And we had an opportunity to maybe pick up his stock at the Under-18 World Championship. He got injured there. Now, head coach Dale Howardchuck of the Barry Colts says that Suzuki did start to play a more inside game in the final month of the season and expects that he's going to continue to develop in that role. But no doubt about the skill level. 
Sitting at number three on your list, Bob, is Bowen Byram. He had a sensational season for the Vancouver Giants, collecting a CHL defenseman, leading 26 goals and scoring a WHL record six overtime goals and then became the first WHL defenseman to lead the playoffs in scoring. And joining us now via FaceTime is Bowen Byron. Bowen, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I'm very excited to be here. So you played for the Giants in suburban Vancouver, which is where the draft is taking place. So let's be honest, how big is your cheering section going to be come the draft? Um, um, yeah, I think there's going to be 60 some odd people there. So it'll be pretty cool. Uh, lots of lots of friends and family to uh, to celebrate my big day with. Um, obviously, being in Vancouver, it's pretty special. Uh, place where I play junior and kind of my second home so um, it's definitely definitely pretty cool being uh, pretty close to home. Now you had one of the greatest individual seasons in the WHL which are you mo most proud of uh, a regular season league leading 26 goals or a playoff leading 26 points. Um, yeah I think probably the uh, the playoff playoff thing there um, I think it's pretty cool I don't think a defenseman's ever ever led to a playoff in scoring before so that's kind of cool and obviously in playoffs you you always want to perform well that's when everything's kind of on the line so um, I definitely say the the playoff leading score thing is definitely something I'm very proud of just to touch back on those 26 goals now the last Cranbrook native Scott Niedebeyer scored that exact same number in his draft year back in 1991 what's your relationship like with the Hockey Hall of Famer yeah, uh, my dad knows him fairly well. My mom's pretty good friends with his wife, so um, we know their family pretty well. I know a couple of his kids, Jackson, uh, well, Josh, well. Josh actually just got drafted by the Vancouver Giants in the Western League draft, so it's um, pretty cool. We definitely have some family ties, but uh, yeah, to be kind of recognized um, like that compared to him a bit is, is definitely pretty cool for me. Uh, kind of think if I end up to be half the player he was, um, it would definitely be pretty special. Now when people describe you as a defenseman, they say you're a player that plays with swagger. Where does that come from? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm a competitive guy, so uh, that definitely has a lot to do with it. Uh, I don't like losing. Uh, I think I do. Uh, I think I uh, show that a lot while I play. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely play with swagger. Uh, I, li I love to have fun while I'm out there, so that's kind of all part of it. Well, it seems to be working for you. Don't lose it, and good luck on Friday. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right, when we come back, a huge move up the rankings puts Niagara Center and Philip Tomasino in position to be a first-round selection. And Craig Button breaks down who might be ranked too high and too low heading into this week's draft on Hot Button Issues. Welcome back, everybody. Here are the final 11 selections heading up the group at number 21 are the Pittsburgh Penguins, who, by the way, have not made a pick in the first round since 2014. They trade away their top pick four straight seasons. At number 22 is Los Angeles with the Toronto pick acquired in the Jake Muzzin deal. And Niagara center Philip Tomasino makes a huge move, rising 12 slots up the ranking. And number 24, Samuel Poulain is the son of 1991 first-round pick Patrick. But, Bob, neither of them are more intriguing than Arthur Kaliev, are they? Arthur Kaliev is the biggest wild card in the first round of this draft. He is big, he is strong, he is fast, he is skilled. He scored 51 goals for the Hamilton Bulldogs, and he scouts are all over the map on him. Ranked as high as number seven on one scout's list, ranked as low as number 45, and virtually everything in between. Uh, I mean, he's a tremendous goal scorer. He's got underrated and highly uh, skilled playmaking ability, but he's a real in and outer, and that is you never know from one game to the next what you're going to get, and it'll be fascinating to see where he gets taken in this draft. Consistency definitely is key. All right, let's take a look at picks number 26 through 31, or rankings, I should say, 26 through 31. Two Canadians, Connor McMichael and Jacob Pelletier, round out Bob's list, bringing to 13 the number of Canadians in the top 31, number 26, Bobby Brink had a season of the ages in the USHL, but 
even more amazing is his backstory. What do you got for us, Bob? Well, you're right. First off, on the ice, Bobby brings an amazing story because he scored the game-winning goal in the World Junior A Challenge, and he did it on a broken ankle. So you could give him the you could give him the Bobby Bond treatment, if you like. Of course, great NHL <laughs> Stanley Cup history. But what everybody's talking about is the fact that his middle name is Orr. So his name is Bobby Orr Brink. Now, his dad did think about calling him Bobby Bond Brink, I mean, after the fact, <laughs> as a joke uh, for that goal. But what a lot of people don't realize is that his dad, Andy, is an absolute hockey fanatic. So when he named his other younger brothers for Bobby, we've got Joseph Henry Brink. And if that sounds vaguely familiar to some people, Maurice Richard's name was Joseph Henri Maurice Richard. <laughs> and... So Joe Henry, but he goes by Joe. And then there's Henri or Henry Richard Brink is the younger brother, another younger brother. And of course, Henri Richard, figure it out. So Bobby Orr Brink, Joseph Henry Brink, and Henry Richard Brink, Richard Brink, or Richard, do you Americanize it? Absolutely amazing story from Andy Brink. Well done, Andy. I don't think those kids had any choice. They're definitely going to be hockey players, that's for sure. All right, thanks, Bob. We're going to make our way over to Craig now for Hot Button Issues. All right, Craig, time for you to weigh in on some important questions of the day. Dylan Cousins came in ranked number six on Bob's list. Is that too high or too low? too high he was 14 on my final list I see him more suited to be a winger in the National Hockey League obviously if you see him as a center then he's appropriately placed I think there's better players Cole Caulfield came in at number nine too high or too low way too low 72 goals during the season for Cole Caulfield including tying Alexander Ovechkin's all-time one season record at the U18 he's an elite goal scorer everybody needs goals is 50 goal scoring Arthur Kaliev a wild thing or a sure thing He's a sure thing, and he's wildly successful with his 51 goals for the Hamilton Bulldogs. I've never heard a coach say they want less goals, not more. Kaliev delivers. And who is the ultimate heart and soul player in the draft? We have Peyton Krebs or Vasily Podkolzin? Peyton Krebs. The way he plays the game reminds me so much of Ryan O'Reilly. That's heart and soul, isn't it? Peyton delivers the same type of performance, the same type of fire. Finally, we got two picture-perfect moments from this season. Which is better, in your opinion? Presumptive 2019 number one pick, Jack Hughes, with Cole Caulfield, or presumptive 2020 number one pick, Alexi Lafreniere, with Mario Lemieux and Guy Lafleur. Yeah, it's a wonderful picture of Cole Caulfield and Jack Hughes. And what it represents is record-breaking nights on the same exact play. Cole Caulfield set in the all-time national team development program goal scoring record and Jack Hughes the all-time points record. But when you look at Alexi Lafreniere flanked by two greats, Mario Lemieux and Guy Lafleur, to me it's a no-brainer. Alexi Lafreniere, the CHL Player of the Year, and you're right, the leading candidate to go number one in the 2020 NHL draft. To me, there's just no comparison. Two fantastic pictures. I don't think you could have a wrong choice. No. Mario Lemieux set some serious records. Uh, he had the greatest season in Canadian Major Junior history, collecting 133 goals and 282 points in 70 regular season games. That's an average of four points per game. And then he doubled down with 29 goals in 14 playoff games. The Penguins drafted Lemieux number one in 1984 to no one's surprise. He is regarded as the greatest pick in the history of the draft. All right, Bob, before we say goodbye, do you have any more interesting storylines from this year's yeah. draft that you can share? Which team and when will somebody jump in on number 12 ranked Spencer Knight, the goaltender from the U.S. squad? A franchise goaltender, fantastic talent, tore apart the combine, great athleticism, absolutely fascinating prospect. Well, there you have it. That's all we got from you for Bob McKenzie's final annual draft ranking show. Bob, as usual, a fantastic job. And Craig, thanks very much for your hard work. Hope you guys enjoy it, and we'll see you at the draft.